Hello folks, welcome to the show. Yes, I'm wearing a Vegas Golden Knights jersey because they just won the game tonight. And I will take any excuse to wear this jersey. It is a little scratchier than others. But I love wearing it. I I, I, I didn't consider it. Excuse me, I didn't consider it one of my favorite jerseys. And then I got it and saw it. You, you just kind of have to see it in person and wear it to really appreciate it. Uh, just how awesome it is. But uh, anyways, this is a NHL playoffs pulse check uh, as we talk about two series that are still alive. I will do a review for all the other series and a preview for the series coming up in round two that are confirmed so far. Uh, but for now, let's talk about the two series going to game seven, though first one I just mentioned is in the West. Uh, it's between Dallas and Vegas, the first and eighth seed. And of course, Vegas isn't just any old eighth seed. It's uh, the Stanley Cup defending champions uh, who got out to a, quite a hot start. They won the first two games before Dallas won three straight. And before Dallas could clinch it, Vegas won tonight in a 2 nothing battle. Um, both goalies played excellent. So if you're Colorado... Which I was going to say, if you're Colorado, you're scared because now you have to play a really hot goalie. But Colorado did just dismantle Hellebuck. So um, I'm sure Colorado was just hoping for a really long, tiring, and physical, gruesome game before, but, uh, excuse me, in game seven between Dallas and Vegas. I really can't tell you who I think would win. I'm just going to say that my bracket has had Dallas winning, so I'm kind of going with them. But I am partial to Vegas, so I'm not. I wouldn't be disappointed if Vegas won. I'm happy to wear this jersey more, as long as it's not at the expense of Oilers, right? So, um, yeah, there isn't too much analysis to really have between the Dallas and Vegas, except neither team has really been able to have a runaway game. It's been a very tight series the whole way through, and of course it deserves a game of seven. Uh, no game was won with more than three goals. The biggest victories are the two goal wins where Vegas beat Dallas 3-1 to in Game 2, Dallas beat Vegas 4-2 to in Game 4, and then Vegas beat Dallas 2-0 tonight. Um, I'm, if you are familiar with Pete DeBoer, you might be scared. Pete DeBoer does not have a strong playoff history. He has an elite regular season history, but not a great playoff history, um, which Vegas also knows about. And so you might be worried, but at the same time, Dallas is a very good team. Ottinger is looking really good. Defense is looking really good. Uh, but unfortunately for you, so is Vegas's defense. They are looking very good. And as is Aiden Hill, he has taken over the reins for Logan Thompson. I'm not sure why they went to Aiden Hill, but I don't think anybody thought it was a bad decision. It's just, is that a better decision than going with Logan Thompson? So far, the case is, yes, Logan Thompson, is, or not Logan Thompson, Aiden Hill is now the third goalie to have a shutout after Shilovs had one tonight as well, and Skinner had one earlier. Um, so, I actually, the more I talk, the more I'm kind of siding with, I think Vegas is going to win game seven, but my bracket had Dallas. So, I'm, I'm actually going to be kind of happy either between either two. I like both teams quite a bit. I, I favor Vegas more, but they also just won the Cup, so I'm not like dying for them to win. Though I'd love to see them win again, but that would come at the expense of the Oilers, so I'd rather they didn't. And then it's a whole thing. You get it. Or not. If not, I'm just crazy, which, yeah, probably. Now, the other series going to Game 7 is in the East. Uh, it's between, of course, Toronto and Boston. Uh, Toronto has played very well with played very well defensively without Austin Matthews, but most of that has to do with Joseph Wall. Uh, to begin the series, uh, Boston won five to one. Toronto took home game two, and then Boston won two straight to make it three to one. And just like last year, Boston lost a three to one lead, allowing Toronto to win two straight games two to one. Yes, I know the last game Boston only scored with a, barely a second left. So, but yes, that is technically two to one. You have you don't get a shutout because you shut out the other team for fifty nine minutes and fifty nine seconds. You have to do it for sixty minutes, that, or or more. That is the that's the line. So it, I would have liked to have seen Joseph Wall get a shutout, um, because I like Joseph Wall quite a bit. 
but he didn't. So whatever. And at the time, I was kind of happy because, yay, now Skinner's still the only goalie with a shutout. But now she lost, and Hill has one as well. He well, might as well have had it. Um, it the series as a whole has been a matter of goaltending. Uh, Swayman has been absolutely phenomenal. Phenom- phenomenal. Thin- He's been amazing. He's been phenomenal. Ha! I tricked myself into doing it. Worked. Swayman's been amazing. He's been phenomenal. <laughs> for Boston. Um, and throughout a year and throughout the series. Samsonov has been admirable, but not phenomenal. But Joseph Wall has. And it has been a part of Toronto's two wins to tie up the series to force a Game 7 in Boston tomorrow night. Um... So that has been the story of the series. But now that goaltending is around the same, um, and now it comes down to star power. Toronto is missing Austin Matthews. Um, Mitch Marner is doing better with Domi and Bertuzzi, but hasn't really shown as much offensive prowess as he usually has. Tavares has been better, but still not quite there. Nylander did have two goals the other night. But star power is still a question mark for Toronto. But it's also a question mark for Boston. They have less stars to rely upon, but that one guy is usually quite reliable, David Pasternak, but has not been noticeable this series. Um, So I think it's really going to... I think if Matthews returns, um, it would be funny if Toronto lost, but I would say Toronto wins, assuming Joseph Wall keeps up his um, stellar play. Kelly Harudi on Sportsnet... Uh, Sportsnet is not known for their smart takes, but Kelly Hurdy is once uh, um, here and there. I like him quite a bit on the panel. He talks about how it's a bit easier for young goalies, um, yeah, especially if in these situations. I mean, because uh, yes, they don't have a lot of NHL experience, but they still have a lot of hockey experience and hopefully championship experience, even if it's not in the NHL. And he talked about how um, these goalies have a lot less baggage. Um, they're not there's not as many mistakes haunting them as would an old vet. So uh, Joseph Wall, he doesn't have a history of losing or choking here, so he's not worried about that. Swayman does, though it's not usually because of Swayman. And and we'll talk about that because when it comes to Game 7 for Toronto, there's going to be the talk about how they haven't won a Game 7 in 20 years. And yes, that is absolutely something that should be pointed out. The reason I don't feel like talking about it is because most people who have been following hockey closely know that already um and it has been especially true when they play boston boston has eliminated toronto three times in the last 11 years um they're looking to make it four but here's the other thing going on with boston is they haven't won a playoff clinching game in six straight games they got eliminated in game seven two years ago they blew a three to one lead uh to florida last year and they blew a three to one lead to toronto this year both in round one. Boston has not been able to close out a series properly uh, in the last two years. Uh, I mean, they, they might change that. I could say, hey, it was just that one year because I like Jim Montgomery. I like Jeremy Swayman. I like Linus Hallmark. I like their defense. I don't like Marchand, but I respect Marchand. <laughs> and, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I think it is going to be um, a trial for Marchand's leadership this game. If Boston loses, I don't think that's a um, excuse me a, a reason to say Marshawn is not a leader um, or shouldn't be captain. I think when you spend your entire career uh, with Chara and Bergeron and learn what they have to say, you are a good captain. And I do think Marshawn is a good captain, but this is going to be his trial of fire as to, okay, what kind of captain are you? Are you uh, going to be able to measure up to those two um legendary captains by rallying your team in game seven i'm not to say that if bruins lose it's on marshawn i'm just i think that's part of the storytelling leadership is obviously part of the storytelling for toronto um they have not had any notable guys with notable playoff experience um as much as i love a lot of dubas's moves for toronto when he was there i criticized him and have on this channel for not bringing in playoff vets he'll bring in vets but not playoff vets 
Uh, the closest that they have right now is Giordano, who, yeah, he's a solid vet, but he's not a cup-winning vet. Uh, I wouldn't consider him a playoff vet. Uh, the other notable guys were Thornton and Marlowe, who were vets by nature of having gray hair, not necessarily by winning cups. They were actually quite good at losing in the playoffs. They were excellent regular season players and uh, have each have a shot at the Hall of Fame. And, uh, and they deserve respect, but when it comes down to it, they rarely got it done in the playoffs. They did make the finals once uh, before losing to another black and gold team, the Pittsburgh Penguins. But anyways, that's all that. That's another storyline. So there's lots of storylines here, uh, which struggle will prevail, if that makes sense. Toronto's Game 7 curse or Boston's series clinching curse. Uh, it's a younger curse, but similarly concerning. Uh, what? How does that reflect on Jim Montgomery? How does that reflect on Jeremy Swayman? How does that reflect on Don Sweeney for Boston? And for Toronto, how does that reflect on Austin Matthews the and Sheldon Keefe and the core four and all that kind of stuff? And what changes will come uh, for either of these teams if they lose? There's a lot riding here. I think both teams, particularly Toronto, are aware that the teams they're on... Um, are, are going to be volatile in the off season if they lose. And I think that's quite possibly part of Toronto's more recent success is they are like, Hey, this could all be over. Um, this, everything we've worked on built towards is just going to end if we don't win this series, if we don't win the next series and at least get to the conference finals, if we don't show improvement. I don't think tree living's made a lot of great moves to help them, but, Domi and Bertuzzi have emerged uh, to his credit and to, more importantly, their credit as well. Uh, and it has been part of the reason as to keeping Toronto tight. They are a more physically capable team. They are a different team, as Marshall has noted. Um, yeah, there's just so much to talk about between Toronto and Boston, and I'm happy to talk about that more, but everybody else has kind of already gone through it, so I won't tire you too much more. Just, uh, I guess, what I think will happen... Mm, it's tough. Just like Vegas and Dallas is tough. Every Game 7 is tough. Anything can happen in Game 7 because it's only one game. Uh, I think both teams are capable of losing it. I, I would say, <laughs> let's put it this way, neither team here is capable is capable of winning this game, but one of them has to. Um, and so it's who do you think is more? In my um, playoff bracket, I had Boston in 7. And I would really like Chris Cuthbert commentating Edmonton playoff games because usually when Toronto's eliminated, Edmonton gets Chris Cuthbert to commentate games, and he's a lot better than Hunter Ryan Singh. I'd much rather Jack Michaels, but Chris P Cuthbert's pretty great too. So we'll, I, I have reason to hope that Boston wins. But honestly, if, if we weren't for that, I don't really care between the two teams. What I wanted is something funny, and the fact that it's going to Game 7 is funny. If Toronto loses in Game 7, that's funny to me. If Boston loses in Game 7, that's funny to me. So I'm happy there. Um, but I, I, I could actually enjoy a Toronto victory because as much as I like to hate on Toronto as an Edmontonian, I'm not heartless. I, I don't, I'm not a hater like Jesse Pollock when it comes to the Maple Leafs. I, I, can, I know they're still human and players, and I like their players, and I have friends who cheer for the Leafs, and uh, I, I could get behind them winning. And I... Not the biggest fans of Boston fans either, and they, I don't. I hope they don't take any offense from that because I'm surely not the first person to say that. Uh, hey, I cheered for Tom Brady. It took me a while, but I did eventually cheer for him uh, in in New England. I say that as someone who cheered for the Broncos, still do, unfortunately. Um, and I've cheered for the Bruins in the past. It's just I would get a kick out of Toronto winning. I would get a quick kick out of Boston winning. I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch Game 7 tomorrow night, but I hope you do if you'd like. Uh, it should be good, entertaining, with so many storylines to go over uh, on both sides. And there, I, I guess there's no use in talking about the ones that might be, just use in talking about the ones that will be in when I get to review the series, uh, probably Sunday night. But in the meantime, let's close out this video so I can get onto the other playoff reviews and previews and all that kind of stuff thank you so much for making this far into the video 
please like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll see more analysis from me hopefully your favorite hockey talker or at least top three for now i can work my way up uh give me that chance and uh, i hope to see you in the next one